Use everything, everything exported, locate, imported, okay, that's that's yeah. a good sign so far. And what's great with Topo Gun is you can have models that have millions of polys on it. Millions. And it doesn't necessarily bring, it, it, it brings in like, uh, I guess a reference of the model. It's not actually bringing the model, so it okay. runs extremely fast. Uh -huh. You're not actually editing the model itself. It's just kind of using it as a guide. And then on here, you have your toolbar on Topo Gun, which are these tools right here. And this is just the tool that I use. There's tons of tools available. I've just found this to be the easiest. And what's great about this is you'll notice if I exported that OBJ and brought it into a program like Maya, I would have to kind of visually model along the side of that model, which is really hard, where this tool allows you to model and just create, it, it kind of sticks everything to the model. So as I, let's say I really wanted to get this valley kind of looking how I wanted to, I'm gonna grab my uh, simple create tool, which is right here, and I'll start just creating verts. And I can go along this model and just start kind of drawing out where I want these. Kind and let's the lines. Yeah, you're just making you're just making these uh, verts as you go, these vertexes. And let's say you know you wanted to save polys, you could do larger vertexes. You know, and do these you know really get in there and add these, and then you can move them around too. Like that one's a little up. And what it's doing is it's actually modeling alongside my model. And you can see why this is really great for characters or terrains or whatever. And you just kind of go through here and do what you want to do, and then you can go up and just start going up the sides of these hills, just kind of tracing out how you want this to look. And what's great is you're manually doing this, so you have full control over what you want this to look like. So by modeling out just a region there, what are you kind of saying? I mean, you're outlining it, but that's just gonna be like one optimized region, so to say? Yeah, and when you're done, I mean, it takes a long time to actually use this tool. Yeah. It's, it's a very time consuming process, but the result you're gonna get is going to be really, really beneficial to your game. So as you can see right now, you know there's probably a thousand, maybe even more, maybe ten thousand polys that exist within just this region alone. I can go through here, and as I trace that out, I can just start hmm. making the sides of those the way I want, and actually just start connecting these and, and really helping. And what's great is you know I'm just going to use the side of this mountain as a reference just to kind of show you how this tool works. But as I go through and just use a simple create, I want to hold down control. If you're using this tool and you've never used it before, you're just click, you're just holding control a lot, clicking the points and just clicking from point to point to point, going through. So multi-select control in a lot of programs is used for multi-select. Exactly. Same thing. And it, as it does it, it creates. And then I look at that and I can kind of look at that, you know, and go, oh, okay, that looks that's pretty good. You know, maybe it doesn't have some of the advantages of the roundness of the hill, but it's pretty close to what I'm looking for. for I saved work great. mobile. It's fantastic for mobile. And I can come up here, and I can I can just kind of go in and start, you know, adding in different elements that need to work for the geometry I'm trying to produce. And let's say we want the top. We wanted the character to be on top of here and just drop straight off and be more in line with what we were trying to produce. And same thing, you just kind of go in here and just kind of create those areas. Fill that whole area in. Fill it in. Yeah. You always, ha always have to fill in the area? Always have to fill in the areas okay. um, because it's, it's essentially modeling a, a 3D model as you go and you do this. So you just want to be kind of diligent and get in there and fill in all these areas. And so basically, as you go around and you model this, these, these vertexes and everything around your entire model, it's basically creating this cage of your initial model that's super, super low poly depend you know from what you had and what's great too is if you're using things like vertex shaders once you're done with this it's got great tools to let you bake all that information into that low res model so you can actually take all that high res data like the shadows and the cavities and different oh, wow. things build that into that low res model so it looks and great can, and it looks great and you can use different shaders and everything so cool. it's a really really great tool in order to just create more of a a low res version of a high res model you know, I'm just gonna go through here, just like here's that pathway. You know, you just kind of go through and and then you can, you know, use the the bind tool here and just start going through and just creating these. And I use this all the time. Every day I'd say I, I use this for custom terrain. You just get a better or better result than just a standard decimator. Um, and that'll allow you too, if let's say you had a really high detailed portion of the map, right? But the rest of it was maybe kind of flat and you wanted to have a nice seamless transition instead of just sticking that one uh, high res piece onto your model, you can you know, create these really low res kind of areas with just a couple of tries and then have a super high res, like take a lot of detail and, and build that out right next to it. So just wanted to kind of touch on this. It's a really great tool to go through. Once, once you build it out like that, what do you have to do then to 
use it. To get it, so all you do is, once you build the model out, and we won't build this entire thing, but it's just kind of an idea to show you how these tool, tools work. It's just a, a really, really intuitive, just kind of easy tool. And the fact that it you know, automatically kind of traces along your model as you go, it's, pretty cool. it's, just, it's just awesome. Like I haven't seen anything that's as good as this. Um, but really, once you're done and you've, you have your model, let's say we've traced this entire map and it's exactly how we want. Or even, you know, we only traced a portion of it and we didn't want all this stuff, right? We didn't want all this extra, extra unusable terrain that's out here and we wanted to just go along the edge. You know, and we just kind of came through and just kind of did one of these around the edge and just made our cut this out, right? And we didn't want a messy cut like you do with just deleting a bunch of tries out of an OBJ and we just wanted to kind of outline the, the edge of this map, right? You're just kind of going down here and we're like, okay, that's good. We don't need all this extra yeah. distance stuff, right? You're like, that's perfect for my map. It's great, you can just model that, keep that all as one piece and then when you're done, you just go to file and on here they don't allow you. You just save your scene, put .obj as it and it's gonna tell you what folder you wanna put it in and you'll have that model. It won't put the reference with it. It'll just keep the actual model that you modeled in here. You'll have your OBJ. You can bring it into Unity or any 3D bring, program. Bring it back into Unity and you can bring it into Maya. You can do a little more unwrapping on it, do some different things to it, bring it into Unity, do whatever you want. You've got a great usable piece of, of um, geometry to use and it, it, it's exactly the way you want it. So just a really, really good tool if you're trying to optimize high-res characters and you want them to look exactly how your high-res characters look but in more of a low-quality feel, or it's great for terrain too. Like here, you can go through, absolutely trace this entire terrain, make it exactly how you want with very, very little um, degradation and more custom to the type of feel and look you're trying to do with less geometry. You mentioned the word kind of uh, unwrapping inside of Maya. That's just a process of taking uh, your uh, the mesh of your 3D model, flattening it out so you can kind of paint on that 2D surface? So yeah, you, basically UV unwrapping. Um, let's say you have custom things happening on your model where you've got caves and valleys and different areas that you know, if you were gonna do a standard projection and unwrap, like you wouldn't get be able to get into those. You can actually get in, separate those out into different UV shells, kind of be conscious of where the seams of those edges are going to meet up and stuff, but have more of a complete kind of model with with perfect stretch. There won't be a lot of stretching, okay. things like that happening. That's one of the things I noticed in, in the terrain built into Unity that when you do that, um if I have mountains and I start painting textures on them, those textures get stretched way out. Exactly, and so if you want to get rid of things like that, a good way to do it is trace the model in a program like Topogon or, or whichever 3D, there's a lot of rig topology programs that work. I just happen to use this because I think it's intuitive and very easy and very close to Unity as well. Once you're done with it, export the model, bring it into a program like Unity, then you want to do your UV unwrapping in Unity, maybe in different shells, kind of be conscious of where the seams are gonna be, where those UVs meet up, and then you have that texture map, then you can take that out, do more of the, the texturing in, in, a, in another program like Mudbox or ZBrush or whatever, Very cool. export that, and, and maybe even uh, use vertex shaders and different things to kind of blend it all together. So there's Amazing. different ways you can do it. Yeah, but this is, this is a really great uh, tip on how to do that. Great. So. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so this is uh, hopefully an information pack. This is our longest session that we'll have of the entire series, but I think some of the most important information, so it's all very appropriate for what you're going to see. Absolutely. We're going to take a, we'll be doing a 15-minute break. We're going to be coming back then after that with the next session. So stay tuned for some more exciting stuff today. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Developing Games for Unity. I am David Crook. Uh, you can reach me at, on Twitter at uh, davidcrook1988. I'm a technical evangelist for Microsoft. I focus on gaming, cloud development operations. I'm huge on idea to delivery. Based out of Raleigh, North Carolina, ALM Ranger. I did development operations consulting at Fortune 100 companies. And you can see my contact information on the slide below. Uh, you can reach me at IndieDevSpot.com and also on Twitter at DavidCrook1988. And this is Dave Voiles again. Uh, you guys should be pretty familiar with him at this point. <laughs> there we go. There's his slide. Uh, so my second time back. Uh, I was here yesterday for a, bit, a few of the courses and now... My first time back today, again with uh, David Crook. So like David mentioned, we're gonna be going over um, ALM, or Application Lifecycle Management. 
Um, but Dave, you had mentioned before that you're an ALM ranger, which sounds way cooler than my last job, which was just simply an engineer. So why don't you take a minute and explain what an ALM ranger actually is? Uh, so an ALM ranger, it's uh, not really a job title. It's just uh, occasionally we would do work on the side to produce documentation for how do you actually do branching and merging? How do you do source control? How do you, what is this TFS thing? So okay. we'd find gaps in uh, what's going on in the enterprise coding as far as process management and uh, running actual source control and we'd write the documentation for that. Okay. So it sounds like you're, you're the perfect person to kind of ask about uh, this and have really a lot of hands-on experience for what we're about oh, to yeah. go over. Uh, about three and a half years in uh, the enterprise doing uh, this, and it's just been a huge experience, and it's great to take uh, that experience and apply it to video games. Perfect. So again, this is Module 7, ALM for Unity, and that's going to be exactly what we're talking about. Uh, module overview, the first thing is what is ALM? Um, I've heard a lot of questions. Application lifecycle management, oh, do you mean my game's paused? No, that is not <laughs> what we're talking about. Uh, second is what is TFS? Uh, project management, source control, and uh, general development workflow. Okay. So the first thing is what is ALM? Um, there's a lot of things out there about what ALM actually is. There's release management, there's testing, your development process, version control, but at the end of the day, it's really project management. It's okay. how do I build an application and how do I release that application? It's the whole end-to-end -end process. So it looks like there are a lot of, people consider it to be a lot of things, but really uh, we're going to be very specific about what we're going to be covering today. Yeah, we're going to cover the main key points, which will be version control, uh, project management, and uh, we're also going to talk about the actual development process and show some of the tools that uh, I use in my day-to-day -day development on how we actually go about doing that. Okay, so I guess project management could cover quite a few different things, right? Uh, but it, it seems to be similar regardless of what field you're working in, so why don't you go over what project management entails exactly? Yeah, so uh, before we get into project management, I want to talk about Team Foundation Server. This is what I use to manage my projects entirely. Team Foundation Server is the Microsoft uh, suite for doing ALM and project management source control. Um, I like Visual Studio Online. Uh, I check everything into visualstudio.com. I uh, don't always work with the same people, and when I do work with people, it's uh, usually all over the place. I've got, um, well, you in Philadelphia. Right, I was both work remotely. With. Yeah, so it's really great to use Visual Studio Online. People can get access to the tools everywhere. It's all about teams, project management, source control. There's builds, uh, coded UI tests, just tons of stuff. So that's really the tool that uh, I like to use for this. And uh, project management. So what? What is project management? Why is this so important? Mm -hmm. um, well, it really helps you with the high-level goals of what you're trying to achieve. Um, what kind of game are we building? Um, what are the features of that game? How do we break down those features into tasks? What are the timelines that we're trying to execute this on? I've got an entire workforce that's working on this. I've got artists, I've got coders, I've got maybe a puppet. I have a puppeteer, yeah, I actually have. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so I gotta see how they're actually executing against this plan and and uh, what our resource usage looks like. Are we actually using these people the way that we mean to, and are they performing their tasks on time? Okay, so it sounds like a great way of just communicating and making sure that everyone on the team is on the same page, regardless of how large or small your team may be. Exactly, yeah, I've worked on teams where um, a couple of our enterprise clients have over 2,000 developers, and okay. uh, organizing that many developers simultaneously is yeah. a bit of a challenge, and uh, this is actually the tool that we use to do that. So at the beginning um, of project management, we usually do every day is a stand-up meeting. You, know, okay. you walk into a room and it's, uh, what do we have to do? And uh, we facilitate this with what's called the board. Um, so we do our stand-up meetings, we work together, do our tasks, close them out, and go home. Um, the board is the perfect place to do this. Over the past couple of days, I've started putting together a sample project to kind of show what this looks like, uh, specifically for games. Um, and we'll do a quick demo on what that actually looks like. All right, so you're actually going to show us the board and what it looks like to, uh, to, to visualize yeah. the, these communications. So this is Visual Studio Online. Uh, this is the home page that you get. When I want to do anything that's work specific, you have a little tab at the top that says work. That's uh, where you want to go to see what's going on with your work. 
Okay. So when I come over to work, you get uh, backlogs, queries. I can see what my backlog items are, but you'll see this little note that says board. Uh, if I click on sprint one, this is the current um, iteration of work that we're doing. And I can see the backlog again, specifically for what we're trying to do with this game during the sprint. Okay, how would you define a sprint? Is a sprint like one day or several weeks? So to really 